Hey everyone and welcome back to the Inner Sanctum. Today we're going to do an unboxing video, but not just any unboxing video. Today we're going to unbox the new Mortis album, The Spirit of Rebellion. What's the big deal you ask? Well, I'll tell you what the big deal is. This is the first Mortis album in a Dungeon Sin style in over 20 years. As you may or may not know, 2001's Smell the Rain was in more of a dark wave style. It had catchy melodies, pop-like song structures, lots of singing, and it was really different from what he had done before that. Those wonderful medieval atmospheres and those the, the dark ambient and Dungeons and vibes were completely gone. This was, at least in my opinion, it, it felt like a deliberate attempt to, you know, appeal to a more mainstream crowd while still keeping a dark tone to the music. It was, uh... It was good, but it was an album that ultimately just did not stick with me, and no more than two years later I sold it. And uh, I remember at the time being very conflicted, like, I, it was a part of me that liked it, because at the time I was sort of trying to explore more avenues of electronic music, but at the same time I just really wanted to keep hearing that medieval, medieval sound that he did so well. And uh, we didn't get that, and it just, uh, you know, I thought maybe there was a chance that he would turn the clock back and then just go back to medieval stuff, but that never happened. From there he went further down the rabbit hole into, uh, I guess, what you, what you just call like industrial metal style. It was comparable to stuff like Skinny Puppy, Front 242, maybe a bit like KM, FDM, and ultimately it just wasn't really my thing at all. I never really got in that style too much, and I'm not an expert, but I just, that, what I've heard from that style never really appealed to me too much. And the last album I bought from Mortis was The Grudge, which came out in 2004. The Grudge, I guess, was named after the shitty American remake of the otherwise awesome Japanese film called Juwan. But I could be completely wrong there. I would hope someone wouldn't name their album after that movie, but you never know. After that, well, I kind of gave up on Mortis. I gotta be honest with you, he just kept doing these industrial metal albums, and I heard a song or two here and there, and it just it didn't do nothing for me. And eventually it got to the point where Mortis, Mortis even shedded his... Uh, his troll, his whole costume, he was just like a normal looking dude more or less on stage and that was really disappointing to me when it got to that point. Because one of the things that really made Mortis the old stuff special was the whole costume, the whole character. And uh, when he finally got to the point where he was just like this goth guy, it was like, it just didn't feel right. It was like he just had gone through all this, the emotions to just be this other thing and he was so like disappointed with his past he wanted to put it all behind him and didn't want to be that thing anymore and it just it, it, uh, as a fan it really kind of just sucks seeing that a funny story to tell about i think it was about four years ago mortis played in my hometown he literally played in a venue that's a five minute drive from my house right now i could have walked this show but I was so disinterested in his style back then, I could just completely skipped it. A small part of me wanted to bring one of his old CDs to the show just to see if he would sign it, but ultimately I think it was on like a Tuesday night or something. I didn't want to be tired for work the next day, and I said, fuck it. So fast forward back to November of 2017, and the Cold Meat Industry is having its 30th anniversary festival in Stockholm, Sweden. The festival invited both active and inactive projects from the roster back to perform for an evening of just glorious fucking industrial, dark ambient, experimental music. And it was a, an amazing event I can imagine for anyone who attended it. I really wanted to go, but I just didn't have the funds at the time. I had actually just bought this house and it just, there was no possible way it was going to happen, basically. It wasn't going to happen. I mean, you just bought a house and then to travel to Sweden and it wasn't going to happen. Same, simple as that. I wanted to go, but you got to be realistic. The show at the Cold Main Industries Festival went off very well and was very, extremely well received. It set off a chain reaction that set off Mortis on various t tours around the world where he was playing sort of a reinterpretation of his old album, and then some Gerard Opper. I did not pronounce that right, but you know how this goes when I try to pronounce these Nordic languages. It was a second album which was released back in 1995, and it was a reinterpretation of it. Now flashback to, I guess, probably the summer of last year, and a new album is announced in a Dungeon Sin style. Yes! Hell yeah, I said. But I, then again, at the same time, I heard that it was just going to be this re-recording of that old album, and I was like, eh, maybe not as cool as I, I was expecting it to be. But then I heard this isn't just going to be a simple re-recording or a reinterpretation. It's going to be more of a continuation of that album. So that's what we have in this package right here. The Spirit of Rebellion, the continuation of the Anden San Gerard Opera album. And uh, as you can see, I have not opened this. I have 
no idea what this sounds like, and uh, this is the vinyl version, of course, as you can tell from the packaging. And all I've heard from this album is just a short promo video that came out maybe back in November of last year, a five minute promo video. And uh, I liked what I heard. It was motivation enough to pre order this album. And uh, the version I got was actually one of the uh, uh, pressings in a smaller quantity. It was a uh, purple press, and I believe it was only 300 copies. And I snatched it up right away, and the pre order came up for, uh, for grabs. And uh, the album was officially released back on January 25th. My uh, copy got shipped on the 2nd of February from Dead Sea Productions in France. And uh, for two weeks straight now, I have been eagerly, eagerly waiting for this to arrive at my door. It's February 25th right now, and we're going to open this up, and we're going to check out The Spirit of Rebellion. All right, all right, it's going to be the best unboxing ever. I got my flag in here, I got my crazy Viking medieval hat, and I got this, this fucking mace here. Hell yeah. Ah, shit. Whatever, this is going to be the best fucking unboxing video ever. Probably shouldn't hit the new mortar zone with a mace. No more bullshit, no more antics, no more talking, no more backstory. You know what's up. This is the unboxing of the mortis is the spirit of rebellion. Hopefully this kitchen knife does the job and I won't have to use get that mace back out. Uh oh. This is what we see when we first open it. We have uh, an expertly packaged uh, packaging. <laughs> and Dead Sea Productions for doing this right. Alright, alright. And the first thing I'm going to pull out here is uh, an advertisement for Dead Seed Productions. Um, some of their releases, upcoming I would assume. Uh, Dead Seed Productions would appear to be a black metal label. I'm unfamiliar with them myself until this uh, pre-order came up. So that's one thing there. And uh, some more, uh, you know, uh, black metal flyers told that related to this video. And I don't know who that dude is, he looks really grim and stuff. And uh, anyway, he probably, he probably don't even care about this, but whatever, they're here anyway. So, what does that say? Well, that says Mortis, cool, the great deceiver. Well, that's not what this video is about, but there you go. So, we're getting closer to the real deal. And uh, we have some. We have a Mortis Flyer. That's cool. I will definitely keep that. Alright. All, all of his back catalog on there. Shirts and all kinds of fun stuff. Patches and stickers. Oh, we love it. Then we have um, another advertisement for some other band. Unrelated. We have some download codes here for uh, some albums on the label. That's cool. So I can learn a little bit more about Dead Seed Productions. And, uh, yet another, uh, uh label release. Alright. <laughs> and, uh, the first thing I pulled out here now is a... Oh, fuck yeah, I didn't even know about this! Oh, that's fucking cool, dude! So, it's this whole big... Let me put this down for a minute. It's this whole fucking big poster from that photo shoot he had, I think, last winter. Oh, that's super cool. On the back is an advertisement for the Spirit of Rebellion. Oh man, I'm gonna get a frame for that. That's gonna look cool as hell. Fuck yeah, dude. I've always wanted to have a cool Mortis, Mortis poster on my wall. Awesome. Super awesome. Alright, and okay, I think I remember now. This was only available for those that pre-ordered from the Dead Seed Productions. So if you just buy this at a record store or some other uh, online mailer, you're probably not gonna get this poster. So, weep with jealousy. Anyway, the reason you guys all came here was for the actual album, and here we go, finally. 20 years I've been waiting for this. Alright, so there it is, The Spirit of Rebellion. Whoa, that's cool. I like that artwork. And uh, I can't think of the, I can't remember the name of the artist, but I'm pretty sure it's the same guy that did the artwork for all of the recent re-releases of the Mortis back catalog. Let's get this plastic off of here without dropping it. <laughs> all right, all right. So there, you can see it again. The front cover and the back. And 
It is a gatefold of more awesome, awesome artwork. Very cool. I am liking this a lot so far. Old music recorded and mixed by Mortis in various locations in Norway and Sweden. Summer, fall 2017. Remixed by Mortis early 2019. Old music written by Mortis, mastered by Jules Seifert and some other stuff you probably don't care about. Blah, 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 blah. The music on this album was originally intended to be a re-recording of Anton Sam Gerard Hopper. It quickly turned into something much bigger. But very different from that. In my reality, this is a different record entirely. So Mortis uh, sees this as a totally different record, but at the same time it was meant to be a re-recording. So that's interesting. That's what, kind of what I mentioned in the beginning. So um, here we go with the back of the sleeve and the front. And in case you don't know, the uh, Mortis music is basically broken into two different eras. The era one is all the dungeon synth and the medieval sounding stuff from the 90s, whereas era two is the dark wave and the industrial stuff. And uh, I, I don't know, I don't know who started that. If he started it himself or it was a fan thing and just kind of stuck with him, I don't know. But that's, uh, even though this is a new album in 2020, it's, we're back to era one now. So, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and uh, here we go. Okay, so it was the purple vinyl, too. All right, very cool. Era one. A little stamp on there, it's cool. Era one. And this side we have... Track listing. All right, very cool. And as I said, I believe this purple vinyl was limited to just 300 copies. And uh, I don't think it was... Um, the most limited pressing, I think there was one other one that was like gold and black or something like that. I think I was tempted to get that one, but I got this one because it was a little bit cheaper. And the uh, reason why I had to go with something a little bit cheaper is because it was an import coming from France. It was in Euros, and then I had to play Euro shipping, which was like $15 and all of a sudden. So I think I ended up paying probably like $35 for this with shipping when all was said and done. So hopefully this is totally worth it. And uh, I won't have anything bad to say in a future video. Hope this is worth the 20 year wait. And uh, I can only hope that, you know, Mortis continues on in his uh, Dungeon Sin, Dark Ambient style. Because that is what, um, that is what I, I've always loved the best. And uh, I know I've said this many times in the show, but this is what got me into Dark Ambient music. It started with Mortis back in the late 90s. And... Uh, you know, it just, it, it, it sprang to life from there. And, uh, you know, 20 years I've been listening to dark ambient music, give or take. And, uh, you know, I haven't been a huge fan of everything he's done in the past 20 years. But for his albums from the 90s, I'm totally always grateful. And the fact that I discovered that stuff and, uh, you know, being into dark ambient music and being an obsessive fan has made my life better, you know. So I have him to thank for that. And I am very much eager looking... Uh, looking forward to listening to this probably as soon as I stop this video in fact I'm gonna throw it on and uh, Other than that, thank you guys for joining me. Thanks for checking out this unboxing. Uh, hope this isn't getting too crazy for you If you did enjoy the craziness and hell yeah, and uh, Yeah, thank you for joining me in your sanctum. Thanks for watching this unboxing if you have bought the spirit of rebellion And you've played it. I would be very curious to hear your opinion So let's discuss that in the comments shall we all right until next time enjoy your night. See you next time Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Also, if you'd like to support me, please consider checking out my Bandcamp site where you can download my music. I have several CDs, tapes, and digital albums available. I also have a subscription service available. 
Thanks once again for watching and supporting Dark Ambient Music.